everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Learning How to Automate Non-Regression Testing for SAP Business Objects Report. I am Megan Sousa, Marketing Manager here with Dunn Solutions Group. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items. This session will be recorded, and we will send out a link to the recording to everyone who registered within 24 to 48 hours after the presentation. We also have recordings of all previous webinars on our website in the event that you missed any in the past at dunsolutions.com. Also, if you have any questions during today's presentation, we encourage you to submit them and we will address as many as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If the question is somewhat complex and we need more time to answer, we do promise to follow up with you for those. So let's take a look at today's agenda. I will begin by doing introductions to Dunn Solutions Group. From there, we'll turn over the presentation to today's co-presenters, GB and Smith. Ms. Amy Benton, the U.S. Sales Director for GB and Smith, will do brief introductions and begin by discussing the differences between manual testing and automation, and then how 365 changes this process. Amy will then turn over today's pres the presentation to today's second presenter, Pauline Leancaster from GB and Smith, who will take us through a demonstration of this product, after which we will take any questions that you may have. So let's begin. Dunn Solutions has a long history of delivering innovative business technology solutions. We are headquartered just outside of Chicago and have offices in Minneapolis, Raleigh, and Bangalore, India. Our offerings fall into two practice areas. Our application development solutions feature portals, e-commerce, and content-managed websites, mobile application development, and custom application development. Our analytics solutions feature analytics and BI platforms, as well as data warehouses and data integration. We are authorized SAP and Liferay training providers and offer classroom, virtual, private, and custom options. We believe training is important because once we deliver a solution, we want to make sure that those who need it know how to use it and maintain it. Our clients, some of which are included here, are a combination of Fortune 500, mid-market companies, government agencies, and nonprofits across all verticals. About 80% of our business are commercial clients, and 20% are nonprofits and governments. <coughs> we maintain strong partnerships with top technology companies in order to offer our clients the most innovative solutions available today. Our application development practice develops solutions that are custom and help to differentiate our customers from their competitors. We provide solutions on portals, e-commerce, and content-managed websites, custom transactional applications, as well as mobile applications for integration with back-end systems. We've been doing custom application development since our inception in 1988, and it's one of our core practice areas. Our analytics practice helps deliver information makers throughout your organization so that it runs better. We can help with decision making by not only looking into the rearview mirror, but also looking forward into the future by leveraging predictive analytics and data mining techniques. We offer a global delivery model that gives us the flexibility to build teams that are best suited to our clients' timelines, budgets, and preferences. Projects that utilize offshore resources are always led by someone local and U.S.-based. Thank you for allowing me to introduce you to Dunn Solutions. I will now hand over the presentation to Amy. Welcome, Amy. Thank you, Megan. I'm just going to share my screen here. Are you able to see my screen? Yep. Okay. Great. So, um, Welcome everybody, my name is Amy Benton and as Megan stated, I am the Director of U.S. Sales for GBM Smith. On this slide you will see more than a few friendly logos, um, many that you recognize. We are beyond honored here at GBM Smith to be able to recognize these companies and to call them clients. Thanks to our clients, we maintain an, a 98% renewal rate with 1 million individuals using GBN Smith products in over 500 countries, I'm sorry, in over 500 clients in 30 countries across the globe. Our user deployments range from small at 100 users to large at 85,000 users. So needless to say, we're scalable and we're pleased to be able to say that we have supported some of the largest installations in the industry. GBN Smith is an international company with headquarters in France. We were founded in 1996, and today we are 50 people strong. Our headquarters are located in Boston, Massachusetts, with offices in California, Virginia, and Missouri. 
Our flagship's product is 360 Suite, and it's comprised of six modules. We're going to go over those really quickly. So um, we're going to be talking about 360 Bind today in great detail. So let's just go through the others very, very quickly. 360 View easily administrates basically who has access to what with a user and a resource-centric approach, and you can perform bulk updates. 360 Plus provides incremental backup, disaster and recovery, drag and drop, or automated promotion. 360 Cast. Schedule and burst your BO reports with easy destination update prompt and filter value updates. 360 Eyes. 360 Eyes is what we all now term as BI on BI, right? So explore and analyze your BO metadata, used and non-used, GRC and impact analysis, including BW and data services. And then last but not least, 360 Eyes Compliance, which is insurance that your BO license is in compliance. So 360 Bind by GBN Smith, automate your report qualification and non-regression testing. In today's very, very connected world, customers are trending towards simplification and a work culture focused on only that which is essential. No matter how sexy your dashboard or creative your analytics, you will find reliable, Accurate reporting is still fundamentally essential to make critical business decisions and to reduce risk. 360 Bind takes that which is essential and makes it simple. Thank you for joining GBN Smith to learn a little bit about how we can help simplify your report comparison and regression testing with 360 Bind. 360 Bind provides a simple scheduling interface for managing report exports, both recurring and one-time instances. We can schedule reports using predefined prompts and filter values. We can do this across time, I'm sorry, across versions, across environments, and we can do it at any point in time. You can schedule reports to be exported into an XML file format for ease of future comparison. And 360 Bind's inherent ease of scheduling should encourage routine regression testing. So continual report validation should be done on a regular and scheduled basis. Anytime you think that there may even possibly be an impact to your environment that could affect your reports, 360 Bind should be run. It's smart to validate early, regularly, and often. After using the Schedule Export feature in 360 Bind, the next step is to compare your reports. Well, when you do things manually, it's the same story. The next step is to compare your reports. Our CEO tells a really funny story about the days when he was performing this very task. He was part of a consultant group, and he was a consultant, and they had all been working on these reports. They were blurry-eyed. So he said that what they would do is they would take, they'd print off two reports, and they'd either be from two different environments, a dev and test or two different um, versions of the product or even two different instances at a time and they take the reports and they'd tap them on the desk and they'd make sure they'd fully align them and they'd walk over to the window hold them up to the light let the light shine in from behind and that's how they would be able to see if there were any variances from one report to the other so inherently I think we can all see how there might be problems with with that method but even so, and even today, even as things have progressed, manual validation of reports is still a very tedious, time-consuming, and error-prone process. It's impossible to touch all reports, so spot checking is allowed. And organizations allow for a margin of error that they would not normally permit in any other part of their business. So there's a cost associated with this spot checking and the reports that can't be predicted. This leaves organizations open to a vast amount of risk. So with spot checking, let's say you have 200 reports because that is what everyone does and you decide to spot check 10%. Well, we can all do the math. That leaves us 20 reports, right? So validation will be done across versions, across environments, and let's sing it together at specific points in time. So what are the ramifications of that? Well, 
If you do this manually, manual processing of even as few as 20 reports can often take several, several days. The outcome, again, is error-prone, it's tedious, and it's lengthy. And there, again, is a risk associated with spot checking. And the cost associated with the reports that are not validated, it's just unknown. So let's take a look at comparing your report data, but using 360 Bind. When you use 360 Bind, everything's automated. You eliminate the headache. Within just a few clicks, the report comparison is completed, the differences are highlighted, and this is all without ever even opening a report. Hundreds of reports can be processed with 100% accuracy in just a few days. If that seems too good to be true, we're going to prove it to you. Pauline Lancaster will be demoing this in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. So we love to give use cases around here because they are real-world stories of our client's success. So our first use case is, um, is a real estate conglomerate, and um, any similarities to actual events are completely coincidental. So a U.S.-based US Fortune 200 client in the real estate sector who is publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ underwent, underwent an SAP XI3 to BI 4.1 migration. Now the functional responsibility in this organization for the report verification fell upon IT and the users within the finance department. But the ultimate responsibility for the published financial data that's provided to the SEC falls upon the CFO. So the company had planned their migration strategy in its entirety. They specifically had allocated a phase for manual report comparison and regression testing, and we applaud them for that because while that's one of the most important steps in a migration, that phase is often not given ample time, resources, or budget. But this organization did, and they did it well. So this client came to us, or we were introduced to them, after their migration and after their manual report comparison and testing. Uh, they happened to attend a GBN Smith webinar, just like you're attending today, and after that, they decided to engage in our POC program. So as per our standard POC program, our sales engineer installed the 360 Bind web app in about five minutes on the client's app server, and then they, they received some very high-level training and um, that training was provided to the client. So the next thing, and this is the part that's important, the CFO provided us something called the margin report, and that margin report was to be validated with 360 Bind. This was a really important report because it was used to provide the public data that was provided to the SEC, giving them all public and financial information. So clearly, the outcome of this report was really, really, really important to the CFO. So they ran the report through the 360 bind engine, and they did an automatic comparison between XI 3.0 and BI 4.1, and there was, in fact, a discrepancy that was detected. Well, to say this really, really simply and be very transparent, the same data retrieved from the same database produced a $1 billion margin total in 3.0, and a $1.2 billion margin total in BI 4.1. So that's a $200 million discrepancy that was caught. Next day, CFO calls us up and we have another happy client. Our next case story are just some real world concrete numbers. So while everyone can see the value of automating, we'd like to share with you these specific real world numbers. A Fortune 500 giant in the chemical industry had performed um, a migration to BI 4.2. They had 1,000 reports to compare. The effort was 250 man days, and they came out with an error rate of 5%. Now let's take a look at the same thing using 360 bind. Same company, clearly, same migration. Same 1,000 reports. But let's take now a look at this second to last piece here, the, the effort. 
it went down to 15 days. And the error rate went down to 0%. Now we think those numbers are pretty sombering and pretty impressive. So we're going to go through those just one more time because I think they're worth noting. 1,000 reports, man days reduced from 250 days to 15 days. That's a 135-day reduction in employee time. Manual process was at a 5% error rate with an unknown potential risk and an unknown cost. 360 Bind provided 100% accuracy and zero risk. The cost savings to the company, and this is, this is the exciting part, cost savings to the company in those 15 days was over 35% of the original investment. And with that, I am going to pass it over to Pauline Lancaster to show you how it is done using 360 Bind. Thank you. Okay. Hi, this is Pauline Lancaster. Uh, sorry, can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Okay, sorry. Um, Okay, so I'm going to cover 360 Bind. Uh, just to give you some reference, this is the 360 suite uh, that Amy described. The first four products are all web applications, uh, 360 View, 360 Plus, 360 Cast, and 360 Bind are all accessed from the same web interface. Um, so if you are existing customers and have 360 View, um, enabling 360 Bind is as simple as adding a license key and the product would be available so I will we will dive into um, into that into 360 Sorry. so logging into the 360 suite um, this is where bind is um, and again bind is very useful when you're migrating to any version of business objects, if you're doing an upgrade, if you're applying service packs, fix packs, um, you're changing your database, whether it's a structure change or updating your database version. So anytime there's a potential for impact to reports, it's important to do testing. 360 bind is done in two parts. So there's export one um, would be from, from one version of, so imagine that we're doing a service pack upgrade. So I'm on uh, 4.1 service pack three and I'm upgrading to service pack six and I want to do a comparison to make sure that the results of my reports have not changed. So there's been no changes with, with the service pack. Um, you know, identify any calculation ending changes, any syntax that maybe wasn't documented um, well enough that you could determine that you might um, have issues. So we would first schedule a bind extract and I will create a new bind extract. Um, I log into the first environment that I'm going to run my um, my extract against. So this will be my 4.1 service pack 3 environment. Um, I have identified a group of marketing reports that are, are going to be included. Um, so I have 10 reports that I'm going to um, run the export for. I can select either an entire folder or um, so maybe I want to select an entire folder. Um, I can I can select an entire folder that I want to uh, to select, or I can just select individual reports that I'm going to include. And I can go through and select any number of reports um, to include. For now, I'm going to include these marketing reports. I'm going to run this once. You could also schedule it to run um, if this is something you want to run weekly. Um, oftentimes you want to run it when a change is made so it might not be something that you necessarily schedule. And then we select our category. I will select exports. Uh, now I can set my prompts. So here are my reports. So imagine I have my 10 reports listed and then I can go through and select all of my prompts and then I schedule the export. I click schedule and the export runs. Um, I can then export that entire um, 
job that I just created. So it's all of my the same reports, the same prompts, and then I can import it into um, my environment where I'm where I'm going to do the comparison, so that I don't have to recreate that schedule job again. So now I have my two exports, um, all of the results of the reports that I've identified are in um, in two folders that um, exported to XML, and now I can do my bind comparison. If I go to the bind tab and select new analysis, here I select the category that I created, that was the marketing exports category. And you can have as many categories as you want. Um, maybe you've decided that you have certain um, business areas that you want to categorize your reports in, or maybe it's by universe, or um, so that you can kind of identify what areas of the system you want to test. Um, so here it's just marketing. We know there's a change that's being made, um, and we want to focus on those. The file format type is XML. If you are comparing crystal reports, we recommend Excel. Um, it's it's um, not as easy to do a comparison with Crystal Reports with XML, and we will compare by CUID. I'm going to compare the last two exports, so those were the exports that were scheduled. Uh, by default, we always compare the data. You also have options to compare a number of other items. You can compare structure, uh, style, image, and then you also can select what what position you want to to uh, compare, um, and again, you don't have to compare all these things. Sometimes it's only important you're only concerned about the data and the structure. Uh, maybe you you're not concerned if um, if some of the data is shifted uh, with cer with certain service packs or upgrades. Sometimes uh, formatting changes a bit, and maybe that's not a concern. Maybe really you just care about the data, so you can um, select only compare data if you'd like. And then the similitude binding would be if you were uh, comparing Desky reports. We submit this comparison. And my results appear. So I'm doing this live on my screen. If I were doing larger reports, uh, we have customers that obviously have you know reports. They might um, return a lot of data or might be more com complex. Um, and running the comparison might take a little bit longer. You can also schedule the comparison to run, so you're not doing it on your screen. Um, so you have several options for that. But I've run my comparison, and I get a summary of the results. So there are 10 matching documents and three non-matching documents. I immediately can tell that in red. I'm going to scroll down. Here's the list of all the matching documents. So these are all the ones that compared all of those options. The data are the same, the, um, the images, the structure, the style. So nothing has changed between the two um, exports. And I'm going to focus on the non-matching documents. So towards the bottom, I can see my non-matching documents. I will select the first document. And this view is um, in XML. This is the analytical view. And any differences will be highlighted in red. I'm more familiar with the report view, so I'm going to select that view. And here I see the results of my reports, and I can scroll through, and anywhere there are differences will be highlighted in red. Um, so here I can immediately see that this column has some differences. The data are different um, in the instance ID column. Um, and so there are a number of fields that are different. So I'm going to note that difference um, and make sure that I, I can I can narrow down what might be the problem with that. Um, I'll click on report. And again, here are the results of my reports. On the left-hand side was my first export, so that was service pack three, and on my right-hand side is um, my second export, so that was service pack seven. And I'm going to scroll through the results, and again, I have differences. Um, so something has changed. I'm not sure what it was, but um, I have identified that there is definitely a difference um, with these two reports um, in that particular column has differences. And again, if I scroll over here, I see data um, 
so instance counts, uh, document sizes. So there are a number of things that are different um, with, with these reports. If I click on the last, and again, I'm going to uh, save that information. I click on the last report, and this contains graphs. And like Amy mentioned, um, a lot of times it's much easier with um, to eyeball a change or to print off one version of the report and, and then the other version of the report and then stack them next to each other and see if you see any differences. It would be very hard to see these differences because they're very slight, um, but 360 Bind can immediately tell you, um, if you look at this top of the graph on the right, there is a difference. Um, if you, after, you know, looking at a number of reports, you may start to not see any differences, um, and this eliminates human error um, and immediately will show you where there are differences. Um, let's see, and then if I scroll down a little more, I'm not... let's see, I can scroll down. Sorry about that. And then scrolling down, I see some more differences. Um, on the left-hand side, there were decimal places um, in the average session count field, and on the right-hand side, there are no decimal places. Um, so something changed. Maybe the format of my universe object changed, um, or or something else in the database. The number of decimal places, or something's changed, and now I need to go and identify um, what the issue is. Um, so these jobs can be run frequently, or um, you can schedule at certain intervals. Maybe every time you make a change, you run your bind jobs, and then you um, determine whether there are any differences. And if there are none, great. But here we found there are some differences, and now we need to pinpoint what those differences might be. Um, sometimes it's going to SAP, creating a ticket, and and getting them to look into it. Um, but oftentimes it's, it's up to us as, as report developers, universe developers, um, BO administrators to actually identify what the issue is. Um, so there are a number of tools that, that we can use um, looking at, so once we've identified fields that have issues, so particular objects, we can then go, uh, go to the universe and determine, you know, is it a calculation engine change? Is it a, um, did, did we make a change? Is there a syntax change that needs to be updated? Um, and once we've determined that, then we, we've, we got lucky and, and selected the reports that contain this issue, but what about any other reports on our system? What about user reports? Um, so say we've identified a calculation engine change. Um, where else do these appear? Does it only appear on these three reports that we ran the bind test for, or are there others? Um, there is another tool that um, from GB and Smith that can help with that. The 360 Eyes tool um, provides you with the ability to further delve into your environment to um, extract information about what objects are in your environment, the syntax used for those objects, as well as which reports contain those objects. I'm going to show you uh, 360 eyes now. Um, so 360 eyes um, requires a database schema, and um, it is run actually in, from the BI Launchpad. So the database schema um, is created for 360 eyes, and then jobs are run. I'll show you the jobs. Um, 360 eyes jobs that are provided with the application. They are run and they extract information from the auditing database as well as the CMS database and populate the 360i's schema. And then from there, you have the ability to run reports and um, create your own reports. So four universes are provided as well as 40 pre-canned Webby reports. And all of this is um, included in the 360i's tool. Um, and these jobs will create a snapshot of your environment um, at a point in time. And then once you have those jobs run, you have the ability then to look at your reports. So with Bind, we identified an issue. Um, we know which object is causing an issue. Um, so maybe there's a universe object that we've identified that, um, or maybe a group of universe objects that have the same issue. Um, 
with the calculation engine change and we want to find what other reports in our environment contain that same issue, contain that same object. So we could actually run this impact analysis report. Here I refresh my report and select my snapshot. So this is the snapshot that was taken um, by running the 360 ICE jobs and I can see that my CMS where that snapshot was run and I can also see the date of the snapshot and then I can select the universe object. So I know this year object um, contains the issue that I've identified with 360 bind or at least one of the issues I've identified. I run this report and the results are um, I get a list of any report that contains that object. So I've given the document path, the document name, and the type of object um, as well as the data provider. And any other information can be added as well if, if you want to know the user. Um, so these are all in the root folder, so these are all public folders. Um, but it will also extract information from user folders as well. So here I know that I, I I have a lot of reports that are impacted um, by this change. So I can narrow down um, my testing. Sometimes it's not a universe object that you identified as an issue, but perhaps um, SQL. So maybe it's um, maybe you've made a database change. Um, you're going to drop a table, you're going to rename a column, or something was changed and that impacted your reports. Um, I will run this report that will let me identify which reports contain that particular SQL that is causing the issue. Again, I select my snapshot and then um, then I'll select the portion of the SQL. So if I know that this particular table um, is being changed and anywhere um, this table is, my, the reports may have an issue, I'm going to select that table, that part of the SQL, and run a query and no results. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll try again. Do I need my? Uh, I'm going to also include my crystal reports because um, those are also those may also have been affected. It would be help if help if I spelled it correctly. Okay. Okay, so now I get a list of reports that contain that SQL. So whether it's in, it's a freehand SQL report or it's a report written from a universe, um, any any SQL in your report, um, I've I've filtered down any report that contains that SQL, and now I have a list of all those reports. So again, I can narrow down. Maybe I've set, I'm making a, a change. Now I can let my users know that might have reports that are affected by that change. Um, and I can also narrow down which reports I need to make updates to. So if I'm responsible for everything in the public folders, I handle those. And if my users are responsible for theirs, so here I see my user folders, there's a number of reports that also contain that object. Um, so I can narrow down um, what needs to be tested, what needs to be updated, what the impact is um, with that regression I found using 360 bind. Now oftentimes there are also updates to uh, syntax. So business objects has, you know, I changed the way um, certain syntax for if then else statements or count um, functions, you know, different things that might change with the functions and I've identified that those are also an issue with my, um, with the jobs that I ran in 360 bind, I've identified some syntax change that is different um, and those are typically used in, um, those are typically used in report variables and I might not have insight into where those report variables are. I may know if I was a developer, I may know where, um, 
that that syntax might appear in my reports, but maybe I've just uh, joined this job and now it's um, I've just you know arrived. Um, I just inherited this environment and I'm not exactly sure what it may be in that environment and I also am not sure what my users may be creating. So I can also run a report that will identify variables in my reports. So I'm going to run this um, impact analysis for variables and I can refresh the report, select my snapshot, and then select my variable names. Um, so I found that this different types difference type variable um, has, an, has an issue and I want to identify which reports contain that variable and here I get a list of all, all the variables and all the reports that contain that variable. Um, so the variable is um, here's the variable syntax and so here I can narr again narrow down which reports contain that issue and then I have um, some information so that I don't just introduce this service pack um, to the environment and then hope the users um, can figure out how to resolve the issues with their reports. Um, but sometimes we found that there are reports that contain um, contain these issues but maybe they're not even they haven't been run in two years um, do we want to spend the time to go and fix those reports and make updates if no one's using them um, maybe it's a universe object that um, that we've identified as an issue and we're gonna we have it in three different universes and we need to make the updates and then we need to test all of our reports maybe it's not even something that's used maybe we can identify um, that particular universe object is has never been used um, or is not used on any reports even though it exists on reports if these reports aren't being run why spend the time um, to, to update these reports so I can actually run a report that is called um, unused universe objects um, so if I run this report I immediately get a list of my universe um, the classes and the object name and then an object count and this will show me whether the objects are even used um, so this snapshot user if I find you know there's an issue with this particular object um, and I'm gonna and I found 25 reports that contain this object um, actually no I wouldn't have found if I if I found there's an issue with this report and I um, I come in here and actually find that there's there's no there, there's no reports using this object then um, what's why would I spend the time to actually modify the object and update it um, it might be a candidate for removing from the universe um, since we found that it's not used by any report um, so you can do this with with any of um, any of your universe objects and again the same thing with reports uh, maybe I've identified reports that have issues um, and those need to be updated um, but maybe these reports aren't even used do I need to spend time updating them do I need to worry about them do I need to continue to maintain them um, so you can run this last document used um, report and it will give you a list um, show you the path for the document the CUID the document name and then any actions on the document so here you see there's a lot of reports in my environment that have never been used um, and if these are um, showing up on my list of reports that contain the particular object or SQL that I found regressions on um, perhaps I don't need to spend the time on updating them so here I, I see the you know the, I can find the reports that are used and the reports that have not been used so if I've been running 4.1 for a year a year and a half and I find these reports have never been run um, they might be candidates for being removed so um, that's sort of a high-level way just some just some reports that can help you to narrow down um, where your issues are once you've identified issues in bind then you can use 360i's to further narrow down um, where that you can find those issues in your universes in your reports and then resolve them eliminate um, anything that's unused and then resolve those things that actually are used 
So I am going to, let's see, can I open this up now for any questions? Um, does anyone have any questions about 360 bind perhaps? Or We do have a couple questions. Okay, okay. Uh, it, it starts with, um, the first thing says, thank you for providing benefits and valid use cases. What are the known issues or things that can't be accomplished with 360 bind? Um, that can't be accomplished or n known issues. Um, uh, let me see. Um, I haven't seen, so I mean, I've, I've seen, the only issues that I've actually seen are users that um, run large, so they, they run large jobs. So they might run 360 bind. I had, I had someone that ran only 10 reports, but each of the reports had um, thousands of pages. And so it, it took some time to do the comparison. It did. It did work. Um, the comparison ran. However, they they didn't have the ability to view in report view. They could only view in the analytical view. Um, you know, it still identified their issues, and, and there's there's enough information in the analytical view. So I did ask them. You know, is there a reason why you're returning so much data? So um, that was the that was the only sort of limitation I saw. But it worked. It, it identified issues. It just wasn't the view that they wanted um, because on, you know, on your web, on your, um, on your page, on your web web page, um, the report view will has to pull back everything, whereas the analytical view will will pull back as you scroll through. It pulls page by page, so it does have the ability to process uh, more pages. So that's kind of that's the only limitation that I've I've seen. Again. And the next question that we have is, uh, we are still on BO 3.1 and assume you will need to install 360 compatible to 3.1. Then another hardware, we will need to install BO 4.2. Uh, what do we need to do with 360? Install another version compatible to 4.2 or the initially installed 360 application is compatible with 3.1 and 4.2? Yeah, so the installs are, are two different installs. So you would, um, if you have the existing install with 3.1, you would keep that install. And then when you install 4.2, um, you would install the, the 4. So I'm on the 4 release here. That, that works with 4.1, 4.2. Um, so you would install that separately. So when you run your bind job, um, uh, so what, what customers will do is when you set up bind, um, you identify what folder that you want. Um, to save your your jobs to so to save your exports to and um, the easiest way to do it is to export to the same folder so your 3.1 export would be um, you know on a share drive somewhere and then your 4.1 export would be in the same share drive um, if it's not possible you can also copy the results over but um, yeah it is two two separate installs but but um, yeah, that, that's how a lot of customers use it, um, is, you know, comparing 3.1 to 4.1 because there are some major differences with that upgrade. Okay. Um, we do have another question. Um, we have a lot of canned crystal reports 2008 and BO 3.1 with a log of graphs and charts in 3.1. How will we need to compare them to the upgraded CR 2016 and BO 4.2? Will it be an XML output? So Crystal doesn't do well comparing exporting to XML. So um, when I had shown you the bind, uh, or sorry, the uh, right, the bind comparison, when you set that up with Crystal, we actually recommend. Um, let me open that. We actually actually recommend um, to export to Excel. Um, that gives you better uh, better results, a better comparison. Show you where that is. So we actually recommend Excel, um, and then you would actually the it does it does limit limit what you can compare. So with XML, you know you have these other options for comparing style and image. So with Excel, you have data and image. So if there were style changes or format changes, you know with shifting, um, you know if the format was was shifting, that that can't com be compared with Crystal. But the data, which is you know the important, it, it um, that can be can be compared. Okay, thank you. Um, another question: If a Webby document has multiple reports, does it identify which report in the Webby document? 
Okay, so which report tab is that? Is that what you, what they're asking? Which um, report tab is that? I believe so. Okay. Okay. Um, Yeah, yeah, it it will it it will do yeah it will it will yeah it will give you results for all your report tabs. Um, so whether it identifies which um, I would have I'd have to t I'm not exactly sure I haven't I haven't tested that before, but I would assume that it would show you because um, let me I might need to test with a and and get and maybe get back to you, but. Um, I'm not sure what it would look like with multiple tabs. I, I believe you would just be um, scrolling through your different reports so if you had a second tab, um, but I, I'd have to test that. I know it does it does all the report tabs. I just don't know what it would look like actually on the screen. Um, you know how whether you would know which tab it was. Um, I don't okay. know if it would be. Yeah, I'd have to look into that. Um, okay. You know, I can get back to you. And, yeah, follow up, follow up on the, okay. Um, the next question we have is, if reports running against life data that return from both environments in a relatively close time, will they still generate different data? Is it possible to compare reports but ignore the data? Compare layouts in general, formulas? Oh, I see. Um, not yeah. really. That's sort of the, the main um, you know, the main comparison is the data. So they do need to be um, the same data sets. Um, so, yeah, see so that I don't, I don't have the ability to uncheck compare data. That's sort of the main, um, you know, comparison. Okay. Um, and does GB and Smith provide how-to services? or only helping with issues and errors? How do you get um, 360 training to be proficient in a relatively short time? Um, yes, we, we provide training. So if you're doing a POC or, or, or a new customer, we, you know, anytime anyone needs training, that's part of maintenance. Um, it's also part of the, the POC. Um, so we will provide training. And um, it is relatively easy to set up. Um, you know, we had a customer that, that needed to, that set it up within 20 minutes once the, installed um, they were able to uh, set up their jobs very quickly um, set up their schedules and, and run their comparison um, very quickly so it's but yeah there's definitely um, training and support with, with this tool okay very good um, does 360 bind compare universes no no it, it, it compares reports um, there are some other tools that that can compare universes if you use versioning. Um, I don't know if you want me to show that, but um, 360 bind does not compare universes, but um, let's see if I came in here. Um, I could actually look at, uh, th there's a tool called versions and you could actually compare um, uh, ver universes and kind of, it kind of spits out um, differences between your universes. Um, so it'll kind of like high level anything in green um, the object exists anything in blue it's been added so you'll see there's a number of folders that between my left hand side is my current version so that's what's in my repository right now and the right hand side that's my version from 2015 and I can see what's different but that that's not bind that's a 360 um, 360 verse and Megan if you would ask that person who asked that question to either reach out to or myself um, so that we can get them a, a demo of that or get them some keys so they can play with it, um, that would be great. Okay, fantastic. Okay. And I do have a last slide here with some promos if anybody's interested in that. I do have um, two more questions to go over and then okay. I'll pass it back to you. <laughs> Sorry. That's great. No, no, okay. that's good. <laughs> Um, can 360 bind be used in universe development comparing databases versus universes? Example, can it identify if all the tables within the database are brought into the universe and if data types are comparable? No, no, it, it compares um, report results, so not no, no database comparisons. Um, no, and not last bind. question. 
we are planning to install 360 on own dedicated server for 3.1, so installing for 4.2 on the same server and run two installations side by side. Okay. Is that the question whether that's possible or? Let's see. That Alex, if you want to give some input. Yes. Okay. So on so on the same web application server. So I'm assuming they're running Tomcat, um, and they would have. I think it's different versions of Tomcat for 3.1 yeah. and 4.1. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's no reason why it wouldn't work, but uh, um, technically, I don't know if you can have both. But if you if you if you've already done it, then yeah, 360 would would work in that um, scenario as well. Um, so we have set it up with you know, a server that has multiple environments, so multiple Tomcats. It's just because when you install it, it asks you where your Tomcat is. So with three point one, it'll be your Tomcat. I think it's seven or maybe it's six, and then four point one, your Tomcat uh, eight or seven. I'm sorry, I forgot which which version. Um, but yeah, that that should work. Um, and of course, if you we could help you set that up if you had questions. No, not on business objects server, 360 on its own server. On its own server. Okay, yeah, that, yep, that should, but you would still have to run, you have to run either a Java web app, so Tomcat or WebLogic needs to be running in order for 360 be, to be installed. Okay, perfect. Um, and that clears up our questions for today, um, and we will follow up with um, the one from a bit earlier as well. Um, and I will go ahead and pass it back to you, Amy. Okay, great. So again, show my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so we're at the end of a webinar. We have to do a few promos. So anybody who's attended today, if you use this code down here, the DNWB, code, you can get 10% off your maintenance if you purchase by the end of August. We also have, because these the Bind and Eyes bundle, and we're going to make you, make you call in or make you submit a code so that we can talk with you a bit more about that to let you know what that actual discount is. But Bind and Eyes um, complement each other, so one does everything we talked about today, and the second one actually helps you detect those problems in the reports and help you um, get through mitigating them. So we'd love to chat with you about that. The other thing we'd like to talk with you about is the um, POC program that we have or trial keys. and don't really know what term you'd like to use, but it's a free program. And seeing really is believing. So anyone who would like to get trial keys, uh, we would love to have you install the product and take a look at what the product does kind of under the covers and how it fits in your environment and see if it's a good fit for you. So if you'd like to reach out to any of us, that would be great. Please make sure to let us know that you are on the done webinar so that we can make sure to um, affiliate with our gracious hosts today and um, make sure that we work those, those accounts together. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Amy and Pauline. Um, we appreciate everyone who attended today. Um, if you all have any more questions, please chat those in now, and we will go ahead and field those. Um, for everyone else, again, thank you for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Uh, Amy and Pauline, we do have another question. So what tool will we need to purchase from 360 to compare universes? We are not planning to buy the whole suite, only bind and I. Okay, eyes. You can also compare universes with eyes. Um, Three sixty view is what I showed you um, the comparison, but you can you can also compare universes with with uh, eyes. Okay, very good. If anyone has any more questions, we're happy to field those. All right, it looks like we're getting a lot of people logging out. So we will go ahead and wrap up today's session. Thank you all again for joining us, and thank you, Amy and Pauline.
look forward to doing more webinars together. Um, Thank everyone, you. enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.